the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you gathering for our Mass and uh, trying to sing along. You have to be fast here now, you know. Have you noticed that? We're very quick on those hymns. Um, it's keeping you uh, alert this morning. So today we celebrate uh, the Mass, especially for Margaret Glynn for her anniversary. We pray also for Father Basil as he continues to enjoy his retreat and break. Uh, and you have myself, Father Kieran, with you uh, for these next few days. So we give honour to our Lord at the beginning of every Mass. We also ask for pardon for any time we haven't lived as the body of Christ. And so we ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, to grant your people to love what you command, and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shemen. Then he called the elders, leaders, judges, and scribes of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Then Joshua said to all the people, If you will not serve the Lord, choose today whom you wish to serve, whether the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are now living. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered, We have no intention of deserting the Lord our God and serving other gods. Was it not the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, the house of slavery, who worked those great wonders before our eyes, and persevered us all along the way we travelled and among all the peoples through whom we journeyed. We too will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response psalm is, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and, and see, see that, that the Lord is good. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The Lord turns his eyes to the just and his ears to their appeal. Taste, Taste and, and see, see that, that the Lord is good. good. They call and the Lord hears, and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed he will save. 
Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will keep guard over all his bones. None of his bones shall be broken. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Evil brings death to the wicked. Those who hate the good are doomed. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. Taste, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. So should wives to their husbands in everything. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord, since as Christ is head of the church and saves the whole body, so is a husband the head of his wife. And as the church submits to husbands, should love their wives, just as Christ loved the church, and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy. He made her clean by washing her in water with a form of words, so that when he took her to himself, she will be glorious, with no speck or wrinkle of anything like that, but holy and faultless. In the same way, husbands must love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man to love his wife is for him to love himself. A man never hates his own body, but he feeds it and looks after it, and that is the way Christ treats the church, because it is his body, and we are its living parts. For this reason, a man must leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one body. This mystery has many implications, but I am saying it applies to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He stands the gospel affirmation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have a message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are in spirit, and they are life. But some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the outset who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. He went on, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the 12, what about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. To whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. The words of Simon Peter to Jesus. You know, this is the uh, sixth week of Jesus speaking about being the bread of life. Not just the first or the second, but the sixth week. Even I'm getting uh, unused to what I can tell you about it. Um, he's obviously pushing the point home, isn't he? that he is the bread of life. He wants us to remember that and that we receive him by becoming the body of Christ. An old saint once said that faith uh, should be seen as faith seeking understanding. I'm sure the disciples didn't always understand everything that Jesus was saying, 
even Simon Peter today and the disciples who remained probably didn't understand everything either. But Jesus is saying to us that our faith is more than just a whole set of doctrines, even though they're important. The beginnings of our faith is actually faith in Jesus himself, faith in the promises made, faith in the bread of life that we are about to receive. In fact, I, I remember a married couple putting it to me even more simply when I asked them about their faith. They said, you know, they believe that a lot of things in life is about a decision to love. And sometimes we have to decide to love and to keep on loving. Now, you could think if I'm going to speak about a married couple talking about deciding to love, you think I'm going to tackle that second reading about marriage and men and women and who's in charge? Even I'm not that brave. <laughs> but we decide to love in relationships. We decide to love as the people of God. We decide to reach out to others as the people of God. And we become the body of Christ because we decide to love and open our hearts to that call of God. And Jesus sustains us with the bread of life. People of the Old Testament there in Joshua, back in those days, he was asking them as they moved into Israel, are you going to stick with your old gods or are you going to come with the God of love? And the people, of course, had seen signs and wonders and they said, of course, they're going to be with the God of love. In the gospel, Jesus has performed lots of miracles over these last few weeks. And he also says to them, you see the signs. Are you going to be with me? Some found it too difficult and walked away. But some people decided to love. It doesn't mean that we have to get everything right. We all make mistakes in our lives. And you know, some people I know, good Christians and good Catholics who believe very much in Jesus and the church and the word of God, but occasionally a doctrine or something the church says may put them off. Certainly, we can debate in the church about various things, but at the heart of our faith, faith is about seeking understanding and knowledge. And the only way we do that is by committing, committing to Christ, committing to the word of God, committing to the bread of life. And when Jesus says, are you going to leave me also? We have to answer that. We should be saying today, as we come to our mass, no, we stay and we believe. And by believing, by deciding to love, by deciding to receive the bread of life at this mass, Let's remember what we're called to do. We're called to put that bread of life into the life of others. We're called to be people who reach out to one another, to be people of faith, maybe not always of understanding, but hoping that through our faith and through our belief that the understanding of many things in the church will be given to us. Let's recommit to Jesus today. Let's recommit to the bread of life and decide to love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to stand, please, then, as we decide to proclaim our faith? And we do that in a simple way today. We turn to the Nicene Creed, and we pray that the Lord blesses each and every one of us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray now in a special way for all our needs. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is close to us, so let us pray for God's assistance. For the church, that she may preach the message of Christ to this generation, giving witness to the truth by her commitment to justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those whose homelands are being torn apart by war or rebellion, especially the people of Afghanistan, that the Lord may guide those with power to find just and peaceful solutions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those searching for faith, that they accept Christ's call to follow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of courage, that Christians may be renewed in their commitment to Christ and each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of eternal life from our dead, that the message of eternal life may be fulfilled for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have asked for our prayer. We pray especially for Margaret Glynn, whose anniversary occurs around this time. We pray for all those that we hold in our heart. Let's turn to Our Lady asking for her prayer in the intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, you save those whose spirits are crushed. Hear our prayers and give us the gifts we need through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us we pray the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, 
He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leo, our Bishop, and all priests, deacons, religious, and all who reach out to God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So now, at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the Kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And so we pray for that peace in our hearts and homes.
especially those joining us online and you too are part of this communion as we unite in the prayer of spiritual communion from St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are pleasant, present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Although you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Thank you very much for being at our Mass today. Do take your newsletter away with you. It gives you everything that's happening during the week. Uh, there are many Masses over the weekend. Uh, there are also Masses throughout uh, the week, and there will be a Mass here in Trenent, in St. Martin's, on Thursday, uh, as usual, at 10 o'clock. Uh, there's also uh, a Mass in Musselburgh there on Friday. So check the newsletter for the Masses and locations. Uh, Father Basil continues to be away, uh, so you're stuck with me for another wee while. Uh, you'll notice their uh, holiday cover if you're stuck. Uh, and you um, need uh, someone in an emergency, there is a number there, but it is only for emergency. And by the way, it's not mine, it's Deacon Gordon's, okay? Uh, I won't always be here, I'll sometimes be in Glasgow, uh, and also, hopefully this week, I might get a chance to go to an ordination. So the best time to get me is before and after Masses. We hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, one thing also to mention, is that I'm sure things will be changing uh, fairly soon in these next few weeks in terms of how we uh, deal with coming and going from the church. But uh, for the moment, we'll just hold uh, to what we're doing until Father Basil has a chance to change things maybe over the next few weeks. And um, so we'll just continue uh, with uh, everything we're doing at the moment for a couple of weeks, but changes are coming. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and all your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And our final hymn, um, there's a couple of final hymns there. If you know them, join in. If not, just listen to the music. Uh, communion uh, is available here. Uh, follow the advice of the students. Thank you. 